Hey guys, it's Tim and welcome to Pro Wrestling Unlimited as we are here today with a special guest. We have independent pro wrestler Richard Holiday with us to talk to us for a little while. We reached out to him after he put out um, on Twitter that he was looking to maybe join some podcasts or do some interviews with different um, websites or YouTube channels and whatnot. And we said, hey, if he's willing, why not reach out? So Richard, what's going on? Not much. I am uh, full quarantined right now and uh, just ready for a uh, hopefully stimulating interview. <laughs> Sounds good. So, so you say you're quarantined right now. How's that been going and how long have you had yourself quarantined? Uh, well, I've been quarantined for a good while now, um, however many days it's been. It's been fine keeping myself occupied, um, you know, only going out for the bare necessities. Right. Not really, not really risking it per se, uh, you know, going out for my coffee or, or, or going out for a uh, maybe a run or something along the lines of that. But it's it's been okay. It's certainly a culture shock, um, a little bit of a, a slap in the face of reality. But, um, you know, it's 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 challenging, but it's it, you got to make do. For sure. Are you just by yourself? You have family with you or anything? Oh, uh, completely by myself. By yourself. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's got to be tough. At least with me, I'm not completely by myself. I do have my kids with me, so I got a little bit of interaction there. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm not one to, to typically get lonely or anything like gotcha. that. So I'm, you know, I'm fine in that sense, and I don't I don't mind the the me time. Um, you know, a little. It is a bit of an escape from society and right. and people in in general. So it's it's not all bad. You, you got to look at it from. A, a bit of a glass half full perspective as, as tough as that may be exactly so enough of that let's talk what you're here for pro wrestling so when looking into your career and stuff i saw you started in 2015 am i correct 2015 yes all right and what really like got you motivated to start your career well i was playing football at the university of new haven and uh, i was maybe 21 or 22 at the time and you know, I was I was an offensive lineman in college. I was pretty heavy, and you know, I looked myself in the mirror one day, and I said, "Well, this isn't the path that I was you know, projecting myself to be on." And right then and there, I made the decision: "Well, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. It's always what I wanted to do. Um, I just didn't really know the avenue to take." And then around 2015, uh, Paul Romo opened up a school about three blocks from my house, literally, nice. uh, which never never happens. You know, people <laughs> typically. People typically travel, you know, quite a right. bit of time just to get to school. And uh, luckily, I didn't have to do that. Well, that's good that you were able to find something local. Because like you said, most people end up having to travel. Because I've talked to a couple wrestlers here locally where I live in Central California, where they travel. If there's, the school does like two nights a week, and they have to drive like hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people that I know, um, had a very similar, uh, you know, upbringing in that sense, you know, being, uh, in Connecticut, you know, I was looking at Massachusetts and New York as right. two potential schools to go to. And, you know, they both produced a, a lot of talent. So, you know, no, no slights to those schools, but I'm couldn't be more thankful that Paul had opened up a school, um, literally in my backyard. So you said you you had the training or the the not training but the history with football and stuff. How did that help your training when you first started? Did it help at all? Was it like, um, you know, you have your football conditioning that you're used to, so that maybe helps with wrestling. How did your football background help with you when you first started in wrestling? Well, I think any any wrestler will tell you that you know conditioning is different in wrestling. It's you know ring conditioning is right. much different than swimming or running or football or anything like that. I would say that the biggest attribute that football allowed for me would be footwork. I've always had phenomenal footwork. I've always had a lot of balance. I've always had um, good hand-eye coordination. I think that translates well uh, to my style in the ring and re really just the foundation of pro wrestling. So I would say football has uh, – footwork, I would say, is the number one thing that, fo that football helped me out with. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know. I I don't know if I've ever heard anyone talk about the footwork like that, as far as like coming from another sport. Well, yeah. I mean, you can take a look at somebody in the ring, and you can tell whether they're good or not just based upon how they move, uh, right. how they look around the ring. You know, because there's a lot of sloppy people out there, and you can tell maybe they didn't have an athletic background, maybe they're just not generally an athlete, uh, and it's, it's it's very easy to tell. That makes a lot of sense. So. 
you say you started out, you know, you found a school close to you in Connecticut. Were you able to find like, once you finished your training promotions locally to work with, or did you have to start traveling a lot once that started going on? Well, Paul owns and operates Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, which is a school and it's a promotion. Okay. So, well, for a while, you know, it was a bit of a struggle for me because I'd say only a good year, about a good year and a half, I, I really only worked for Paul. Um, I don't know if it was because, you know, I had a uh, maybe a bad reputation when I first started or um, maybe I you know, rubbed people the wrong way and it, it wasn't, I wasn't somebody that people were looking to bring in necessarily right. um, in the surrounding areas. You know, I, I actually remember a few times specifically where, you know, I might have said the wrong things very early on and rub people the wrong way and i was i'm not going to say blacklisted because i was so new you know just have to really blacklist somebody who who at the time didn't have much of a name um but it, it, in that sense that's kind of what happened uh, so it took me about you know two years maybe a year and a half to to really start branching out and going into other other states other promotions yeah because i was looking into it you know <laughs> I see here in uh, 2015 you worked uh, for Northeast Wrestling. Then you went in 2016, did some stuff for Wrestle Jam and Showcase Pro Wrestling. And then in 2017 is when I see you did more stuff with more different promotions and whatnot, like CZW. And here we got you did some stuff for Evolve. Early on, where was like your favorite place to work early on? Early on, I would say Extreme Wrestling Alliance in Rhode Island um, was really big at the time, and that that was like a, a destination for New England uh, based wrestling. Um, that was always a good spot. I, I did do some shots for Northeast Wrestling when I first started. Um, I'm back there now, um, awesome. kind of, but with a completely different um, aura about myself. I'm a much different. Uh, you know, mind state and, and the way that they portray me as well, it's much different. It's a, right. kind of a full circle type thing, which is cool. But yeah, really, I, you know, I would go anywhere, you know, when I first started, it, it was, you know, just let me get my name out there. Let me get, let me build a body of work and start working with different people. So, but Extreme Wrestling Alliance was, was one that really helped me. And, you know, I, I built a good foundation there. They started to put me in the ring with better talent. And from there, it started to expand. That's good that, you know, you were able to find a place that even early on in your career, you were able to, I guess, like, I don't, I don't want to put words in, but say maybe feel at home or feel like they would actually work with you, even though you were young in your career and stuff. And I see you started with uh, MLW, which is where most people would probably know you from in 2018. What got you to MLW? Yeah, MLW is going to be what's going to be most synonymous with my name at the moment. And um, I'm very proud of that. Well, MLW came to New York for the first time in, I believe, October of 2018 uh, or July, July of 2018. And they had um, we had had some slight communication um, before that. And they had said, hey, listen, we're going to come to New York. Um, we're doing this battle riot thing, which was a 40 man battle royal. And I think at the time, maybe they were just looking for bodies. Right. And, you know, thankfully, I was one of the guys that they put in. However, when I showed up to the venue that day, um, things changed. And I, I was not only just in the battle ride, but I ended up having a singles match. I was in the opening match. Oh, that's cool. Of, of MLW New York. So, you know, I was the first match that New York fans had a taste of, which is uh, pretty historic, uh, considering that's one of our hubs now uh, right. at the Melrose, yeah, the Melrose Barroom in New York. So, but that's how I started. And, and it just kind of snowballed from there. And so being from the Northeast, that kind of, I, I would assume that kind of felt good for you to be like the first representation of MLW in that area. Yeah, it, it was, it was historic. I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, I'm happy to say I was the first, you know, I was the first wrestler that these New York consumers saw. So to me, I can always remember that. And it, it could always be a little feather in my cap. Even with the MLW, you are a former MLW tag team champion with MJF. Where did that alliance and tag team come together? Well, me and MJF are two very like-minded individuals. So it was, a, it was really a perfect pairing. And, you know, it, it, I felt like it was something that MLW desperately needed. They needed, um, they needed guys like him and I um, on TV and, and doing these segments and, 
and then incorporating Alexander Hammerstone and, and, and just forming the dynasty, um, which has probably been the most talked about thing in MLW for the past yeah, year. Yeah, probably. So it, it, it's, it's been quite a ride with the dynasty. It's still going. And so, you know, with that as tag team champions, what was your favorite, I guess you say, title match with the, you know, the tag titles on the line with MJF? Well, I think the my favorite match that we had was definitely the, the when we won them in Chicago in okay. the latter match. And I think that was a match that, that nobody had thought the dynasty would win. You know, when you're in a ladder match with, right. with a lunatic like Teddy Hart and, you know, a guy who's willing to risk it all like Brian Pillman Jr. And you come out victorious as the new champions. You know, that right there is, is going to be um, something that people just weren't pegging the dynasty to win. And, you know, shame on them for not thinking that the dynasty would be able to pull <laughs> that one off. You know, of course, it was me who was up there uh, pulling down the titles and, and having that moment. So for me, I mean, that was my favorite in terms of title defenses. Um, man, I, 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 off the top of my head, I can't even think. I, I, I keep going back to, uh, I keep going back to, to the ladder match. Right. I, I did see that match, and that was a really good match. That was one of, actually one of the first matches I saw when I started really getting into MLW. I watched that show and saw that match, and was like, wow, this is really, really good. I thought all of you guys worked well together, and it was just a, a really fun match to see. But outside of MLW, what has been one of your favorite matches outside of MLW? Outside of MLW, um, what comes to mind would be a match that I had for Beyond Wrestling against Christian Casanova on uh, Uncharted Territory Season 2. Um, you know, consumers can see that on IWTV um, now if, if they wanted to just go check that out. But, you know, that's a match that, you know, a guy like Christian, he's, he's an incredible talent. Me and him just, just blend so well together. Um, and that was probably one of my favorite pieces of work from, from 2019. Awesome. And, you know, going forward in 2020, what are you really looking forward to with the year coming up once, you know, people start working again and promotions start running shows once again? Yeah, if we ever if we, if we ever start wrestling again, um, and and you know I'm I'm not minding the time off for my body right now just to kind of recover and right. you know maybe you know hit the summer. It's looking like it's going to be a summer you know end of spring summer type thing. Um, so going through the summer, but you know just continuing to increase my branding and continue to increase my reach. You know, 2019 was such a wonderful year for myself and Dynasty and MLW. MLW is doing huge things. And I think uh, I think MLW is going to be releasing some really big news um, in the coming maybe months or so. Um, maybe this virus might have slowed down um, some progressions, but some really big things are coming for MLW. I know that. I can't say much more than that. Right. But whatever that brings, um, I think that's going to allow the talent to have much bigger of a reach. And uh, myself being at the forefront of MLW and, and leading the dynasty at the moment with, with Hammerstone and Gina Medina, um, the sky's the limit. It really is. So are you looking this year to just keep on working with MLW or are you looking to branch out with other promotions as well? No, I'm solely focused on MLW right now. I mean, I'll do the other independent promotions, um, you know, like, like beyond and, and, you know, whoever else may be, um, you know, I'm always looking to, to go throughout the country and you know, I'd love to go out and wrestle more in California and, you know, Texas, Chicago, wherever the case may be. But, but my sole focus is always MLW. Um, I'm focused on making that the, the best brand out there. Um, you know, if you want to consider it an, al an alternative, if, right. um, you know, to, to the to what others consider the top two, um, that's my goal is is to not make it the top two, make it the top three. You know, I, I want MLW because I think MLW has the, has the the roster and and the television quality to do that. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, maybe maybe we're, you know, not we're not one step behind by any step of the uh, by, you know, right. And we've seen you know, we've seen MLW growing their relationships with other promotions like AAA. Is there anybody in AAA maybe you're looking to work with? No, I'd actually prefer to never go back to Mexico. <laughs> oh, and um, why is that? In Mexico, just doesn't do it for me. Um, I'm not into it. Um, it's, it's, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I sanitized my hands when I was in Tijuana and, but 
the relationship with AAA is fantastic. Uh, AAA is obviously a very notable promotion, uh, and it was an honor to go there and uh, and represent MLW uh, this you know last week uh, in Tijuana in front of five thousand consumers. So they do put on huge shows, um, but again, I'm not I'm not too interested in going back to to Mexico. Gotcha, gotcha. So to wrap things up here, I want to say thank you for joining me today just to talk about your career, where you're looking to go in the future. Where can they find you on social media and whatnot? Consumers can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Most Marketable. Same handle for both. Had to make it easy for you guys. Um, follow me. All my content is there. I'm always posting new things. I try to keep content different on both pages. Um, follow me. Be a consumer and, and continue to support and watch MLW. Awesome. Sounds great. Again, I want to say thank you for joining me here today to talk, and maybe we'll talk again in the future. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Sanitize.